Microsoft Planner is one of the best ways of being able to track tasks at a team level. But we don't always have to create tasks manually in the planner ourselves. We can take feeds from different places all around the Microsoft 365 suite and outside using Power Automate. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. I speak to a lot of people who are using Microsoft 365 and looking for ways to try and use it more effectively. And Planner is always one of those services which I talk about which will have a positive effect on the way that people work. But quite often, we end up doing a lot of task management and a lot of creation ourselves. So why not start to utilize more of the 365 suite, start to look at the Power Platform and Power Automate to maybe start feeding in information automatically into Planner for us to start managing those tasks. And what we're going to look at today is taking a feed from Outlook based on a, a flagged email, creating a task with some basic information in there that we can then go and assign out to somebody else. So my journey is going to start right here in my inbox. And I've got a, an email which I need to go and do something about. In this case, it's an invoice. And what I'm going to look at to begin with is just how we can get some information from Outlook into Planner with a minimal of fuss uh, in order to uh, create a task and then be able to track it through. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my email and I'm going to have a task created in my Flowbytes Planner. And to do that, I'm going to utilize Power Automate. So effectively, I'm going to flag my email. We're going to take some information. We're going to create a task and we're going to see where we actually go and do that and how we create a task with all the information in there that we need. So I'm going to start off just by creating my trigger and I'm going to begin with using the out, uh, an Outlook connector and I'm going to use for a flagged email. So I'm going to go and find my Outlook connector first of all. And I'm going to use when an email is flagged. And I'm not going to do anything else beyond just leave it in my inbox. I could target specific folders, but I'm going to leave it as my inbox. And that's what we're going to trigger on. But what do I need to do now? Well, thinking it through, I need to create a task. So if I come to a new step, I have the ability to go and uh, use the planner connector. So if I select planner and then filter down, I've got a couple of uh, options that I've got in here. I can create a bucket, I can create a task. There's a number of things that I can do to interact with my plans and we're going to investigate that more over the coming videos. But let's go and do the basics. Let's create a task. And so when I create a task, I can give it the fundamental information that I need just to get something appearing in Planner. And um, what do I need to give it? Well, planners get associated with a group, so I need to give it a group ID. So let's do that first of all. So from my group, I'm going to select my Flowbytes group. So that's my Office 365 group. I then need to select which plan I want to associate this task with, because I can have multiple plans associated with my group. And so in this case, I've only got one plan. And I'm going to go and select that, my Flowbyte tasks. From there, I can give it a title and a bucket. Now, if I didn't give it a bucket, it would just appear as a uh, as almost an orphan task. It still appears in the plan, but it doesn't actually appear in a bucket. It, uh, but I'm going to go and give it a bucket to start off with, and I'm going to call, uh, just put it in to do. So to do being the normal bucket that we have whenever we create a brand new plan. So I've given it group plan bucket. I now need to give the task some information, uh, some information to go and create itself. Now, the only thing that I need to give it by, uh, by default is the title. And so again, um, as I can with other connectors, I can use a combination of text. I can use a combination of dynamic, uh, dynamic content in order to get the subject that I want or the title that I want. So uh, let's go and put process email and let's take the subject. So the title of my task is going to be process the email and then the subject of, uh, that has come through on that particular email. At this point, I can give it a start date and I can give it an end date. I can also give it a, um, an assignment. 
So just for the purpose of today, I'm going to give it I'm going to give it my user ID. So the task is going to get assigned to me. If I'm utilizing um, the tags and the color coding within um, within Planner as well, then I also have the ability to select which color I want to give it. And all of these are just true or false, yes, no's. So I can, I'm just gonna mark that one as a red ta uh, a pink task, um, just so that we can see that coming through. But if I go just quickly draw a parallel between doing this manually and what we're doing in Power Automate, if I add a task, I'm giving it a name, And effectively, what we are doing is giving it a title, uh, we're assigning it to somebody, and I'm selecting a tag, I'm selecting a color. But what about things like the notes? How do I go and actually set those? Because that doesn't appear in this create a task action. And, the, and so one of the things that I've, uh, that catches a number of people out is that there are actually two stages to creating a task. First of all, I have to create the task, but then I have to update the details. So I'm going to shrink that down for a moment. So I'm going to go and add a new step. I'm going to go back to my planner and I'm going to scroll right the way to the very bottom where I have uh, this action here, which is called update task details. And so if I select for that, what it's going to ask me for is a task ID, but now I can give it more contextual information. I can give it a description. I can uh, give it some attachments or links to attachments. And I can even build out the checklist that goes uh, that corresponds to that particular task. But let's stick with the basics for today. So I'm gonna give it a task ID and I'm gonna give it a description. So I'm going to fill in this. I'm going to get, uh, give it some notes. So let's come back to my flow again. So I have my task ID and if I select that, it will just go and grab um, a couple of, uh, it will go and just go and try and access a planner, but I actually want it to access a specific planner. I want it to, ex uh, uh, to physically update the task that I've just created. So I can choose a unique value at this point, and that means that I can then use my dynamic content to take the ID from my first step, which is create a task. I can then pass that into update task details, and then I can update it. So let's just filter that down to ID. Now in my dynamic content, I have the ID. So that now has given uh, the ID from the, the, the created task, it's passing it into my update, update task details, so I can now supply the additional information to give my task everything that I need. So let's go and add a description. And what I'm going to do is just scroll down, let's go and have a look at what else I've got in my, uh, from my email that I could actually put into there. Um, I could potentially have a combination of some of these pieces of uh, dynamic content. But what I'm going to select is the preview. So it's just getting something in there. We can try and do more with it uh, if, we, if we wanted to really try and go to town with regards to the information that's going in. But we're just looking at the actual creation process for a task. So I'm gonna give it an ID and I'm gonna give it a description. So let's close that down and let's just save that. Okay, and I'm just gonna put that into test mode. And let's go and manually trigger that. So that's gonna give me my little uh, my little donut of doom in a, in a moment where it's just gonna sit there and wait. There we go. So now I can go and trigger my flow. So I'm just gonna switch back to my email. Okay, and here we go. I've got my email sat in here. Uh, so I'm going to just go and flag it because I need to do something with it. And now if I switch back to my flow, so my, fl my flow fires because I flagged the email. It goes ahead and crea uh, creates the task. So I can see it's in flow bytes, it's in the tasks. It's given me uh, my title. 
in the to-do bucket and it's assigned it to uh, a pink task assigned to me. What it does give me is a unique ID. Now that unique ID, I can then go and pass into my update task details. So it gets passed in. I've taken the summary from uh, that's been given to me by my email. And so now when I actually come back to my planner, it's just gonna give that a quick refresh. I've now got my pink task assigned to me with the uh, subject process email, uh, process email, view your Microsoft invoice. And then when I open that up, I've now got some basic information in here. So this is step one of us managing Planner uh, with, within Power Automate. Starting off with the fundamentals of, this is how we create a task, this is how we supply as much information into that task as possible. Once we've got, the, uh, got to grips with this basic uh, part of the process, then we don't just have to look at Outlook, we can look at SharePoint, we can look at Teams messages, anywhere where we may want to try and take feeds for our tasks from, we have the ability to feed those automatically into Planner so that we can then start to manage them. They haven't always got to be associated with you. You could then have uh, logic in there to then associate it with somebody else. And that's what we're going to start to investigate over the next few videos. So I hope that's been useful just to understand the basic process for creating a task. Go away and try and try that yourselves. Find your own use cases because once you find your way of being able to do this, uh, the you really start to open doors. You'll be able to really utilize this in so many different scenarios. If you do have questions about the content that we've covered, please do feel free to reach out. You can reach me on Twitter at MattWeston365. You can reach me on LinkedIn, um, again, at MattWeston365. Or feel free to post in the, in the comments here and I'll do my best to help you with anything that you need. But for now, I hope that was useful. Take care of yourselves and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.